Hello and welcome. This is Roger Sherman, photography leader for Kennewick County 4-H. And uh, today's video is about photos that pop. This video is brought, brought about by a question from a member. It was a great question, I thought. And it was, how do you make photos pop? <laughs> and I haven't done photography for a long time. And I'm always asking myself that same question. How can I capture a photo and make a photo dramatic photo that people really, my view, you know, that I can have a viewer get interested in, want, really want to see? How do I make photos pop? Gosh. I'll share with you a little bit of my experience. Uh, I am not a professional, but I love photography. And let's talk a little bit about how we can make photos pop. So with with that in mind, let's keep in mind some of the some of the things we've already talked about in our meetings or presented and made available um, online. I'll send out the uh, to the link to the Kenosha County 4-H photography members. But if you happen to stumble across this video from outside of that context, well, welcome. And uh, there are a few other videos that I've made and of course I would really recommend searching YouTube for video guidance because there is a ton of video guidance that's out there that's really good and maybe I'll just make a video on some of the best video guidance that I personally have found. I think that'd be a good video. I'll have to think about that maybe coming up soon to a video near you. But for now, uh, how do we make photos pop? Well, we have a video on composition, uh, which is down here, in which, you know, there's a link to in the photo. I can't put links in these actual videos because these videos, a lot of YouTube videos, you can do that. You can put a link to it. But I, these are 4-H focused videos, which mean they're quote unquote for kids. That's YouTube's, YouTube's uh, terminology, not necessarily mine. I use the term frequently, but I would... I like to um, refer to our 4-H members as members and not as kids. But YouTube has restrictions on uh, videos that you submit that are targeted for kids, or in this case, for members. And I think those are good restrictions. They're, they're there to protect young folks from being easily uh, redirected to maybe inappropriate contact. So I'm all for the fact that, hey, you can't embed uh, links directly into the video. I can embed links into the descriptions of the video, um, which I'll go ahead and do. Uh, but we have a video out there that I've created about photography composition. And uh, I've shared that with the membership already. And I would encourage people to, to keep continue to leverage that. And there's all kinds of really great advice on in YouTube's and in books you two might read either from the library or you might purchase or whatever. There's a lot of content, a lot of online websites as well. Talking about photography composition, an awful lot of getting photos to pop have to do with combination of getting the right technical aspects of the picture correct. Get those nailed. And that is our exposure triangle and we have a brand new video for discussing the exposure triangle and you need to get the technical aspects of the picture correct most times to get a photo that's going to pop sometimes you might go against some of the normal uh, photo uh, exposure triangle settings to create something exceptional and if you do that for a for good artistic reasons and it feels right for you, by all means, do that, all right? One of the things about all of these videos is there isn't a magical way to do this. There isn't necessarily a right way and a wrong way. There are ways that tend to lead to a wider audience finding your photography more pleasing. That may not always be what you want to go to. Maybe you as a photographer, which is needs as a creative artist, that's really what you are, 
maybe maybe you want to look for a subset of people uh, that like a certain type of image that you, or a new type of image that you're going to create. And maybe you'll bring a new audience with you and more power to you. If, if, if my goal here is to get you guys interested, you all, everybody, guys and gals, members, interested in photography and in developing as creative artists. And if you find right now your photos don't pop or not all of your photos pop, um, I think we're all on a journey to get more of our photos to pop. And part of that journey is leveraging the technology, the, the exposure triangle, and leveraging photo composition. So I beat that one up a couple of times. And if you think about what is it that draws a viewer in, well, photo is a two-dimensional object. And really what we're trying to do is present something that we've captured in two dimensions, but draw our viewer's eye to what it is we want them to see. Uh, so framing can be an aspect of that, which is, and there's a lot of ways to frame. In this example here, we're actually, we're framing it by massive rocks, okay? You may not always have massive rocks, but you could frame things uh, by trees, on each side of whatever it is you want to picture. You may frame things by looking through a window to see the, your subject. Um, you may frame things by other people standing close to your subject and you really are focused on um, the person or persons in between those pillars of people, if you will. You can frame things by color. There's a lot of ways you can, you can Frame the things by negative space. And if you uh, go back through the video on composition, talk a lot about negative space. And um, negative space properly used can give you a wonderfully pleasing picture and a picture that pops. But think, think in terms of as you're working towards on your journey to getting to those pictures that pop, framing is going to be... Uh, maybe a pretty important aspect to at least some of them, maybe not all of them, but it's a nice tool to keep in mind having. Another one is to just capture the drama that you're seeing. So part of getting to the point where you get pictures of pop is knowing where to look, where to see them, where to capture them. Have a camera with you, which fortunately is a much easier to do nowadays, right? We all have our phones. Our phones tend to, modern phones tend to have pretty decent cameras on them. Uh, so that's very helpful. But if you have a more conventional camera and you're more willing to go out with it more often, I think that gives you a little bit better discipline. That's just me, my thoughts, that if you have a more structured camera, that, that it may provide you more structure in your approach to photography. But if you're just in love with the way your phone takes pictures, you like the, the interface for it to take pictures, you just seem to be drawn that way, then by all means, rock and roll. Rock and roll with your, your phone. But a, a key thing to keep in mind is there's times where drama almost comes somewhat naturally. Uh, in this example picture here, the drama really comes because it's the end of the day. And that has an opportunity where the sky can turn dramatically blue as the sun is leaving it. And you're getting sort of that last light before the sky goes dark entirely. And it's a deep shade of blue. And the sun is so low, it's actually set below the horizon here. And so now if you catch this... If you catch it on a good day with the poofy clouds in the right place, or even possibly even a lot of storm clouds in the right place, once the sun is at an angle where its rays are below the cloud line, it lights up the lower aspects of the cloud. So now you have this deep blue in the sky, but you have the undersides of the clouds all alight with the sun. Very dramatic sort of uh, opportunity there. 
And that can lend itself to a picture that gives some drama and that drama helps you to provide a picture that pops. So here we're using a dramatic contrast in lighting, right? And contrast, this is just an aspect of dramatic contrast. You, you can find and create dramatic contrast in lighting yourself. Create a little studio, even if it's just a small lighting box in your home or um, lighting up a small area in your home and create dramatic contrast between light and shadow. Uh, here we have nature's way of creating dramatic lighting contest, contrast for us. Experiment with some silhouette. This is an example of silhouette here where silhouettes can make things can almost instantly because of the contrast that we just talked about, give us some drama and, and make the picture present itself pop out a little bit more. The other thing you'll see in this picture that would be helpful again of all those long list of things in our composition video is leading lines. So think about that. Can you compose your picture with leading lines that would help to draw the viewer's attention to what it is you want to draw them to, their eye to? And because you're drawing them to your focus point in your picture, what your story was about, and if you capture that focus point in a way that, that really sort of jumps out to the viewer, it could be in depth of field, it could be in this case, just negative space of the silhouette. So the focus point really is the outline and the black substance of, of the person here. And we know uh, by inference, the story says, hey, this is a photographer, it's the end of the day, uh, may be using reading glasses here, uh, but he's holding on to obviously a camera on a tripod and he's looking at the end of the sunset. So it's a picture that tells a story. It's got some leading lines. It's drawn as to where the sun is setting. It's got a nice mix of layers of color. So we're using layers, another composition tool. So start to use and leverage those position tools. Here you would use for silhouette pictures, you would take the, use the technical aspects of the camera where you would maybe shut down exposure to the point where the foreground image is underexposed and just becomes a darkened silhouette. And the background really is, it, the whole thing with the silhouette is the light is coming from the back. Uh, another aspect of making pictures that have a chance of popping, if you will, is the whole contrast again of light and shadows. And here we have shadows, we have shadows as the sun's going down, and we have shadows that are really creating leading lines. Now they're not straight leading lines. Leading lines don't absolutely have to be straight as a ruler. They can be leading lines that, that are sort of wind our way to our subject, right? So the shadows themselves are creating leading lines. There's a certain amount of framing here in the fact that the the lawn is framing up to where the tree is and the sky is framing down to where the tree is. We're also using that rule of thirds, another composition piece here, right? So this sun is setting pretty close to the intersection of uh, a third over on the left-hand side as we face this picture and just underneath of uh, the third of the top of the picture. And if you're if you're wondering how the sun got to be sort of that star shaped, what you want to do there is work with the exposure triangle such that your F stop on your lens is closed down to something in that area of an F stop of 16 or above usually is when I've had the best luck. And it usually sometimes takes a lens that's uh, maybe a little bit better lens. Sometimes some lenses, I think you'd be very hard pressed to get this star shape to happen with your phone. It's a possibility. The other aspect to get that star shape is usually that sun needs to be partially hidden by something. It actually, it's very bright here, so you don't see it per se. But because that sun is behind that tree, that some of the limbs are, some of the branches on that tree 
are affecting how much of that sun will shine through. And that's assisting us in getting to that star shape. So those are all aspects you have, you need to investigate how people take a picture where the sun becomes a star shape. So you need to read up on this and do some research on this. You need to uh, be patient and make sure that this get the sun into the right position so it's a combination of you can get the right shadows the sun is, is hanging in the right spot in the sky and uh, in this and hopefully if the day is working for you it's nice to have some clouds in the sky it's i think a more interesting picture with that versus if it was a, if the sky was just blue uh, so all of these are aspects of how to help you get a picture um, that would be more likely to pop. Another one is depth of field. And again, discussed in the compositions, but here it's executed. And the whole idea with depth of field is you're opening up the aperture of your lens to a very wide area and you're getting close to your subject. It's that combination of having your aperture open as practically as wide in this case a very narrow depth of field you want to open the aperture up as wide as the lens will support and the light conditions will allow you to and you have to sometimes control those light conditions but a narrow depth of field gives you this wonderful look where the the whole picture really is framed by the fact that the only thing is in focus is the aspects of the flower we really want the viewer to see so the the flowers that have bloomed already and the flowers that are working on it uh, it makes a nice composition we're using the rule of thirds again another compositional uh, technique for us uh, we have a pleasing set of colors another compositional tech technique for us but this really tends to pop because it's a contrast of what's in focus and what's not in the contrast of of the colors of the colors that are in focus and the greens that are in blacks that are not so it's a combination of all those things light dark contrasting colors contrasting focus and out of focus uh, good positioning rule of thirds all lend itself all those compositional things we talk about lend itself to a picture that pops so it's another example of uh, using the right tools. The one thing that is a better lens will give you better bokeh. And I don't, I don't want to tell all the members, hey, go tell your mom and dad to go buy your really expensive camera. You're on a journey to how do you get the pictures to pop. Not everything will be there right away for you. Also, a lot of these phones now have computational photography and aspects where they will emulate using software what would be otherwise happen with a very expensive lens. So you may very well have a tool already that can give you something very similar to this without all the expense of a very expensive lens. So, and that can be also the right tool, right? So you want to use the equipment that can produce the image that you're, that you're reaching for. And so what you want to do is research and learn how to use those tools. Learn the exposure triangle, learn your camera, learn your phone if you're using that. Learn what, how, how the software, the hardware, the settings all work. Um, so get to where you master your tool. That's going to give you the better opportunity. Trust me, I would, the vast majority of my pictures, I wouldn't say pop. Uh, but I have gotten some that do, and it's very, very satisfying when you can do that. Look for the exceptions. Uh, this is a picture where uh, in the summertime, and I've done this for a number of summers in a row, you go out in the end of July time frame or so, the sunflowers are in bloom. And you can go to the various sunflower farms that are in the Midwest here and and can rent their use of their flowers if you want to take pictures basically they'll charge you a fee to go walk amongst the flowers and obviously 
be respectful of flowers or trample them down. Uh, but if you catch it on a good day, where you know where it's a nice uh, mix of sun and clouds, uh, it's I think it's better on a day where you have some clouds in the sky versus a wide open blue day. You know, this solid you no know, blue sky with no with no clouds. I don't think that's as nice for taking pictures. The sun is very harsh, and there's no there's no relief in your pictures when you take them. So on on this particular day, there was poofy clouds in the sky. It was, per, it was perfect. The weather was really good. Um, I took a lot of pictures of mature sunflowers, but this particular one was exceptional and it caught my eye. It hadn't fully bloomed. It's sort of a juvenile flower on its way. And it was standing well above the other flowers. And by being able to position myself, I could capture this sunflower in, in the roll thirds, which, which helps compositionally, but also in the fact that it's standing head and shoulders, so to speak, above the other flowers. So it, the, just the flower, its position, the fact that it was nice and straight, the fact that it was immature, the fact that it had all these spiky things, lent itself to there and and you just have to sort of over time as you get better in photography realize that it's like hey i you know my eye is naturally catching all of these yellow flowers in bloom in burst lots of things going on a lot a lot of bees landing on them so there was a lot of opportunities to take pictures of bees inside of sunflowers which is really cool uh but this one jumped out at me in the fact that it was something exceptional. And I had to stop and think about it for a minute and say, hey, do I want this picture? And, and it occurred to me this could actually be something quite different than the other pictures I had taken and had the opportunity to be something that jumps out at you simply because of its exceptional nature. So you have to sense for that. You have to look for those exceptions as you're out and about, so and and you won't. You're not born with that sort of thing. I don't believe anyway. I think you develop those sense. Um, you'll develop your sense of look and artistry as you go along. So think about those terms. Look for those exceptions where it gives you the opportunity to capture something that maybe not everybody else is capturing. Look for symmetry. Uh, this was a simple out and about on my bike on a trail and i just love the symmetry of the clouds uh, and their reflection in the small creek down below it and you can't really see it too much but there's a tiny bridge there caught my eye uh, but just the symmetry uh, the dark blue with the white stand making the white contrast of the dark blue and the white clouds really jumping out at you the contrast of the deeper greens in there versus the coolness of the water and the reflection. So we're seeing symmetry again. We're using, we're seeing contrast here. Uh, we're seeing we can actually uh, frame the reflection of the sky with the ground, whereas the, the ground itself, uh, the sky itself is sort of wide open, um, almost an inverse framing of the clouds here, if you will. So you again it's sort of when you're out and about have your camera with you take some shots and and be you know be willing to experiment uh with this um i don't think i underexposed it but i might have gone just a third of a stop or a half of a stop underexposed to have the contrast to enhance the contrast on this picture um and again um, you know, the, the more you can have some contrast in there, oftentimes can help a picture to like, do that sort of pop out that we're talking about. Be willing to experiment at night. This is a challenge. Uh, oftentimes your shutter is going to be open much longer. So you have to find ways to uh, accommodate that. If you go through the exposure triangle, uh, as the light coming into your camera recedes, you either have to open up the aperture, you have to let the ISO climb to higher numbers, 
which is amplification of the signal of light to the sensor such that it can enhance what light it has available at nighttime it's going to have significantly less light than during the day you know one of the ways you can counteract that is if you have a camera you can mount on a tripod or set on on something stationary to hold it then a slower shutter speed is fine be, as long as whatever you're taking a shot of isn't moving too much an example of the tree the tree's just there. It's front lit actually from light from I don't know, 40, 50 yards away is a garage and that has lights on that is, you know, night lights on. So it's front lit from the garage, but you can see the stars from behind. And this was taken with the tripod. Uh, we talked about it, having the aperture wide open. This was taken with a 1.4 35 millimeter lens. Aperture was wide open at 1.4, uh, and everything is in focus. Even though, so even though the aperture is wide open, and that can give you the opportunity for a very narrow depth of field, if you're far enough back, and I was probably I don't know 20, 30 yards back from this tree, if you're far enough back, then your depth of focus can can grows and grows and grows until basically it's infinity. Because even the stars don't look out of focus, and certainly these trees in the distance don't look out of focus either. This shot was actually shot with a faster shutter. It wasn't quite as dark as this was, but it looks dark simply because we're running a faster shutter in the earlier evening, and we needed a faster shutter to capture this ball in the air. So I was running with a faster shutter. Aperture was, again, wide open and the ISO was left to auto to kind of resolve itself. But it was getting, it was past, well past sundown. So there was enough light to capture to do all of this, but it had to be a, a higher ISO to, to get this result. So you, you get the drama though from all the contrast, right? You have the light of, uh, of all of these human made devices, the ticket booth, uh, the arcade, the colors and everything contrasted with the darkness of the night kind of lends itself to something that would pop same over here you get a lighted tree contrasted with the darkness of the night here you have an example of creating something where you let the shutter move slowly in the picture on the left here let the shutter open and close slowly this was taken at about a third of a second or a half of a second and it gave the water the eye uh, the opportunity to smooth out and leave very ethereal look. And on the right, we have the aperture open for about a quarter of a second, but this ride is moving so quickly that all the lights smooth out and add to the drama of it. So sometimes you can get a lot of drama by just slowing up your shutter if you can keep the rest of the if you can keep the camera still this picture on the right was set on a tripod this one on the left i think i might have handheld it but i was able to hold it still enough that we got that it might have been on a tripod i can't honestly and i was fortunate with this picture of the fair this Racine county fair that the people that are anecdotally in the picture weren't moving very much because if they were they would be very blurry and it would take away from the shot I was kind of fortunate there but this is an example of things you can do put your camera on a tripod slow up the shutter and and hopefully you can get something like this and if you can if you know where water is rolling or you can create a small fall out of a combination of things in your backyard you don't need a lot of water. It actually looks often more pleasing if it's not a gush of water, but uh, just a small stream trickling over rocks, and then you slow up the shutter, and it gives you this very ethereal look that kind of really enhances the picture, makes it something more likely to pop. And then the last advice I'll have for everybody, and we'll talk more about this during our meetings too, and we have a, a third video out there, talking about uh, leveraging the tool Photopedia online if you don't have Photoshop. Photoshop's a more expensive tool. But if you have a Photoshop or a Lightroom or tools like that 
learn more about how to use them, how to master things, because of really getting to the end photograph from the point at which you frame the shot, you've taken the shot, you've brought the photo onto your PC for development, and then you present the picture, maybe print the picture or publish the picture. There's a lot of steps involved, and a very important step in that is being able to edit your pictures well. Who's cropping the picture? It may very well be that if you shoot in RAW, which RAW is one of the opportunities for cameras where they'll capture the most information, but a lot of times a picture needs then to be adjusted in photo editing to bring out the colors and the contrast and all those things that we talked about. But a raw picture without additional photo steps and photo editing will not be as pleasing and less likely to pop. So learn as your journey to making more pictures that pop. Learn about photo editing. Learn what editors you have available and you can have there's a lot of tools out there that doesn't that don't necessarily cost more money than you, you might very well have a decent photo editor on your phone, on your tablet, on your PC, on your Macintosh at home. If you don't, there's certainly Photopedia. Photopedia, we have a video on that on you in, in our channel here on YouTube about how to use Photopedia, and that will emulate. Photoshop and give you a lot of that capabilities free online. So that's great. But you need to learn those tools. And I would encourage you over time, learn several of those tools because they're always being an answer. It's a, we live in an amazing time where there's an amazing lot of tools out there with great capabilities. And it will, on your journey to being a photograph, photographer, and artist, creative person. These are the tools of your craft and you want to learn them. So with all of that, this has been Roger Sherman, the photography leader for Pinochet County 4-H. And I want to thank you for joining us today. This discussion on getting photos that pop. And if you have a chance, uh, I would encourage you to like the photos or like the video if, if you did like it. Or let me know if you did, then that ways I can make it better. And if you want, go ahead and subscribe to my small channel. Um, I'll keep trying to produce some of these, that, and hopefully if I get comments back from folks on ways I can make it better, I'll work on that as well. So once again, thank you. Roger Sherman, Kenosha County Forage Photography Leader, and have a great day.